Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain an educational problem on trees, a problem that I find very interesting and it's often harder for people to understand the idea from the uh, first try. So I decided to make a tutorial in order to make the understanding of this problem as easy as possible while also mentioning all kinds of techniques we can use around this idea for other problems. So. In this problem, we are given a tree consisting of n nodes and we want to find uh, for each node the maximum distance to another node. At the first glance, it looks like we can run this very simple algorithm where for each node we would do a BFS or since it's a tree, a DFS also works in order to find this maximum distance and then we will be able to answer to each uh, of these questions very easily. Unfortunately, this algorithm runs in O of n squared and given the fact that n is up to 200,000 while also the time limit is one second, we can say for sure that this algorithm is way too slow in order for us to solve the problem. However, we can rely on using a faster algorithm in order to uh, solve this problem. And the way we want to approach this is by pre-computing something and maybe use it in order to compute some other distances. This is something that we usually do when it comes to tree problems and it's something that we also tend to do when it comes to more difficult tree problems as you might see in some DP on tree problems while also in uh, other uh, types of tree problems out there. And in order to get this done, we want to first start by rooting the, no the tree at node 1 and computing for each node the biggest distance to a vertex in its subtree. And this would be 0, 0, for this one it would be 1, for this one it would be 0, and for this one we will take the maximum of these two and add 1. And now we can answer to the first question for node 1 so it would be answer 2 and we are one step closer to solving the problem however we still need to figure out how to answer to the queries for each of these other nodes now I'm going to talk about the main operation we are going to use in order to uh, find the, the answer for a child based on the answer the parent has and what we're going to do in this second DFS is that uh, uh, alongside the parameters we usually keep in a DFS, we will also keep another parameter that will tell us the highest distance we have from a vertex, uh, from the vertex we are at to every single vertex that's not in the subtree. So for example, for node four, we would have the maximum distance to each of these other ones except for itself while for 3 we will store the maximum distance to any of 1 and 2 so the vertexes that are not in their subtree and first for node 1 this would be 0 as it's the root and we consider by uh, convention that it doesn't have anything in its subtree now how do we update this uh, value for a child uh, a very simple way of doing this would be for whenever we go from let's say 1 to 3 to take all of these maximum distances that uh, the other sibling, siblings have and observe that the distance from this nearest sibling to the node we want to go to is 2. So for example with 0 here we know that the distance would be 2. 0 plus 2 equals 2. But we also need to consider the distance we have here because uh, maybe for one it's not too relevant but once we get to 3 and we want to go to 4 we will already have a distance and we need to add 1 to this one. So, uh, but unfortunately without any optimization this will still be n squared on a tree that looks like a star. So we want to do a better job and while this is somewhat better it will still TLE. Now in order to get this done 
we can also pre-compute for each node the two highest distances we computed at the first DFS. These don't have to be necessarily pre-computed as they can also be computed while doing the second DFS. And why is this helpful? Because whenever we go from a node to a child, we want to avoid choosing the same distance twice. As for example, if we were to choose one as the greatest distance and go to three, we would find ourselves in a situation where instead of having an answer of three, four, five, we would have a way bigger answer because of the way we compute this formula by adding two to the distance of the sibling. So we would start with a three and go to have four when the true answer is actually three. So in order to summarize, we will have uh, two steps to do. So. Uh, for a given node, we want to compute the greatest two distances uh, from uh, the current node to siblings. So two distances to siblings. Also taking consideration the distance we already had, consider the current distance. And maximize them. Now, in more formal terms, in order to find the answer to uh, in order to find the answer to the problem, let's see how we compute these distances now. So, from one to three, we want to now pick up the greatest distance that's not this one. Alongside the way I explained by finding the two greatest values, we can also use a set or sort the values. There are plenty of ways to get this done. And this means that from one to three, the greatest distance of a sibling is zero. And a candidate would be zero plus two, which is two. Also another candidate is this distance we had here from which we add one. So zero plus one is one, but this two is greater. So we will have this blue distance now being two. In order to find the answer for three, we will now have to do the maximum between these two and it will be two. Now, the same question lies for 4 and 5. 2 plus 1 is 3 in both cases, but this greatest distance of 0 is not big enough to make a difference. So we will have 3 for both of the cases. Now, for node 2, we can safely pick 3 and get its 1. And by adding 2, so we add this 2 because we have a distance of 2 edges from any sibling to any other sibling if they share the same direct parent. So one plus two is three. And now we can now conclude the process of finding the answers and printing everything we got. So we got three for node two, two for node three, and three for both nodes four and five. So now we managed to find all of these distances in our way. Even though it might look a bit complicated at the first glance, you will see after I showed the implementation that the process is actually not too difficult at all. So let me show you what implementation I had. So of course, at first I read the tree, processed it, and now we go on with the two DFSs. And in the first DFS, we simply compute the uh, highest distance from each node to any other node in the subtree. And this can be done very easily using a manner similar to subordinates. So uh, that problem is also there. Well, for the second DFS, it's a bit more difficult as we also have this dist up parameter, which is equivalent to the blue numbers I was writing on the whiteboard earlier on. Here I decided to find the greatest to the sub three distances, which can be done very easily by knowing the distances we found at the first BFS. Now, in order to go from a node to its children, we have to consider two cases. If the distance we are now facing is actually the greatest one, we want to always pick the second highest distance. And otherwise we can just pick the greatest distance. Now in order to find the answer, as I said, we can now pick the maximum between the answer we found at the first DFS and this dist up, which at first is zero for node one. So in order to conclude, 
instead of doing n squared where we want to just do the simple DFS for each node, we now run a 2DFS process where we first use one instance of that brute force DFS and then for the second DFS we compute uh, all of the other distances using valuable information we got from the first one. So this helps us get the answer for all of the other nodes very easily. And it's also a technique that's broadly used in other problems like this one as well. So for example, three distances two is very similar. The only difference is that instead of just keeping a variable with this maximum distance, we will keep two variables with the sum of the distances as well as the number of nodes for both of the DFSs. And there are also plenty of other 3DP problems where we will do something I like to call the 2DFS technique. This is often a technique that uh, uh, even though it's, uh, it seems complicated at first, it's actually very easy to come up with after you solve a few problems. So uh, it's also something that um, is uh, often very uh, often found in code forces, maybe not uh, as frequently shown as it was in the past, but still a good uh, resource to know about. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please like vi the video, share it and subscribe to the channel as I want to do more videos in this coming year, the year that just started. And I also want to focus more on educational content as well as, let's say, easier problems in order to help people that are just starting with competitive programming and also with algorithms and data structures to get used to uh, these kind of algorithms and these very standard problems and well-known problems. So again, thank you for watching and see you with the next editorial. See you soon.